In accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Act NJSA 1046 PL 1975 C231 S1 amended 2006 C70 S2, the Asbury Park Board of Education has provided adequate notice of this meeting by sending a notice of the time, date, location, and to the extent known, the agenda of this meeting to the Asbury Park Press and the New Coaster on January 4, 2019 by email. Copies of this notice have also been placed at the Administration Building Bulletin Board, District Schools, Asbury Park Municipal Building, Asbury Park Police Department, and filed with the City Clerk on January 4th, 2019. Our mission statement, Asbury Park School District will provide all students with a comprehensive and progressive education where everyone possesses the skills and character to succeed in a diverse, evolving global society. Mr. Hastings, roll call, please. Ms. Breach. Here. Mr. Grillo. Here. Ms. Jones. Mr. Ladaraka? Here. Ms. Lazinski? Here. Mr. Pinckney? Mr. Saunders? Ms. Etienne? Ms. Abbas Anderson? Here. I'm going to start with the report of committee chairs. I'd like to start with Mr. Lotteraca, please, Chairman Lotteraca, for the Finance Committee. F thank you. Uh, Finance Committee met. We, we discussed issues relating to uh, the budget planning for next year, so we'll um, begin to report more uh, specifically as we look at uh, gearing up for, uh, for next year. And Joe Grillo, uh, has been willing to look at what would be our next town hall meeting and uh, going to get that date, kind of a mutual date for that, which I think will be another discussion about the um, uh, financial situation of the district as well as uh, student academic achievement and other issues. Uh, the energy services uh, company interviews, the uh, company selected has been Energy Systems Group. They were, uh, they scored the highest among the, uh, the group that did, uh, did the interviewing. And, and is that an issue on the agenda or does that just? Yes, the appointment of Energy Systems is on the agenda for approval this evening. Okay, so you'll see that You'll see that tonight on the agenda. See if you have any questions with regard to that. Um, point number three, there, there was an error in the information that was distributed about our per, per cost, or our cost per pupil, um, reducing the number published of over 42,000 down to over 36,000. Again, as an aside, um, that includes all funds to the district, which in a way seems to punish those districts that have substantial grant funding that are doing a tremendous amount of additional support for students, such as Asbury. And, uh, but that's what gets distributed and the state says, well, that's how they do it. They do it the same for everybody, but there was uh, a significant error that's been corrected. Um, doing a comprehensive maintenance plan, which is another one of those uh, state requirements to just have, it really won't affect, in my understanding, looking at issues relating to facilities as we move forward and and what we might do but it's it's a requirement that we we have this plan in place and show uh, a particular um, cost per per square footage we also had a demographic study done um, again be aware and you can see uh, under this study, the, the population of the city 
It's decreased slightly from 2010, 2017. Uh, it is a study limited to the confines of Asbury Park. So I think as we move forward, we have to keep in mind our strategic approach will be not only to draw students from Asbury Park who may now be attending other institutions, but I think we have put programs in place whereby we can be drawing students outside of Asbury Park, primarily at the high school level, to be coming uh, to our district. But uh, so in that sense, the, uh, uh, the study is somewhat limited in just saying these are the demographic issues this individual found in doing the study. And the study is available if board members would like to uh, go through it. I don't think it's all that voluminous, correct? It can, uh, so you can uh, contact Mr. Hastings and, and look at that. Uh, and then just a few other comments. You can see we've uh, contacted an architect to update our long range, long range facility plan, another requirement. Um, we have to remove underground storage tanks from the maintenance shop property. And there was a discussion that the most recent charter school uh, did not receive permission from the Neptune Zoning Board to relocate to uh, the former church with an attached school in Neptune. So that charter school is still operating in Asbury Park, I assume, at both church locations there on, on Grand. And they're currently appealing the zoning board decision to the uh, superior court. And, and that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Lotter Rocco. Are there any questions? Ms. Breach, chairperson of uh, athletics. Good evening. Uh, we have our meeting Monday. Uh, pretty much just getting ready for homecoming. The one important thing, mark it down your calendar, October 4th. It's the uh, home game that we're going to dedicate, officially dedicate the plaque for uh, Mr. Bruno. Uh, we anticipate 5.30 p.m. That's the time the family's going to arrive. So extend the invitation to board member staff. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a, we put it off twice before because of the weather. So it's gonna be rain or shine this time. Um, everyone knows what homecoming is. Um, we're working on you know, the floats, hopefully, hopefully um, getting the convertibles again to make things a little bit easier for our board members and staff to ride it instead of a bag of a truck. Um, we still have a lot of things to work out. Uh, I just met today with uh, one of the um, lead persons from the class of 1969. Uh, she provided me a yearbook and some pictures of the reunion, so we're going to focus on the 50th graduating class for this year with our photographs. Um, again, the VIP tent, it's pretty much, it's homecoming. So that's what you're gonna hear from, from us. And then we're gonna disseminate all the information down as we solidify it, but it's definitely the 18th. Okay, just find out if you have any questions. Yeah. Okay, any questions? All right, thank you. Mr. Hastings, would you report out for buildings and grounds, please? <clears throat> the committee met this past Wednesday, the 18th. On the agenda, you'll see there is a, a use of facility request with a fee waiver uh, for St. Stephen Church uh, for an upcoming event in October, I believe. Uh, they're asking for a uh, waiver of fees. The committee discussed it, and in keeping with some past practice, they were willing to committee's recommendation was to waive the room fee but not the uh, custodial fee uh, but as you'll see it on the agenda uh, the agenda is written that they waive the entire fee uh, so we can amend that as the board pleases um, 
the uh, high school HVAC system uh, continue to have some issues with the auditorium unit. Uh, train was on site today and they'll be on site again tomorrow. They've discovered a piping issue that's inhibiting the flow of oil through the unit. So they're rerouting the piping to uh, resolve that issue. Uh, we did speak with some of the users of our facilities for the fall about the various policies that are in place uh, that they must adhere to. So we reminded them of those. Uh, and also administration is looking at a proposal uh, in keeping with our push on the uh, performing arts to update the sound and projection systems at the uh, high school. Thank you, Mr. Hastings. Ms. Lazinski? Any favorite? Oh, I'm sorry. I have a, I have a question, question, Mr. Hastings, in regard to the uh, facilities use. The, the problem that we have recently has, has come back that we had in the past years with the football games and the uh, cooking on the fields and the incident that happened two weeks ago. My concern is when they have, we have these large events at our fields, um, I know we have first aid there and police there. I guess the concern that you know I have and other people may have is especially with the with the football teams that are there is is there a way that we can when we look at the, these special events that have them require them have first aid or somebody there in case something happens to them? Yeah, um, my suggestion would be uh, that the policy committee uh, take a look at that and see whether or not um, it is um, appropriate or preferred uh, that for sporting events um, that an either private uh, EMS service be required to be on standby, you know, at or near the field, um, or some other arrangement be made, uh, whether it's just the hiring of an EMT uh, to be at the game. Uh, but I don't think it's a bad idea to require it in view of um, the type of activity that's going on for that particular um, use. Like literally we're talking about six or seven games during the whole course of the day. There's a lot of, a lot of people there in the stands, a lot of students playing on the field. I mean, most of the other events that we have there, we have somebody there. I mean, it's not our requirement, but I think just for safety and, and just the public perception that maybe because we talked about that maybe we should do some type of amendment to it or contact them. Yeah, I would certainly leave that to the policy committee. Um, you know, I know that there would be concerns uh, with regard to costs. You know, they are nonprofit groups that are using it, and and they have um, limited funds, et cetera. Um, but certainly, there may be a way to ensure um, that <clears throat> there are you know rapid response times and or someone available uh, who's trained and certified. Uh, and certainly it could be a requirement if, if the policy committee feels and the board feels that uh, it's appropriate to do so. The one thing I want to mention is it already is included in the facilities use so they know the concussion protocol and policy of the school district. I don't know if there's any um, opportunity to, to know that they have completed the course because it's online a lot of that stuff they do it here for the coaches and I didn't know if these organizations have I don't know much about the sports organizations if it's required by their parent organization to have something somebody on on staff you would think with football there may be some sort of requirement I don't I don't know for a fact because I never checked into it yeah, with regard to the concussion protocols and things like that those are school district policies for school events and, and school teams uh, with regard to outside teams <clears throat> and outside sports organizations the governing body of the respective you know, group may have a requirement or a protocol but um, my concern quite frankly would be that we are exercising some sort of control over the organization and what we are doing is literally allowing the group the use of our facility. Um, and so uh, the line gets blurred where there, where there is responsibility once we start kind of getting, our, getting into the weeds uh, with, with the organizations. It's just out of concern for the church. Absolutely. Council. I understand a what you're saying. Absolutely. And I understand what you're saying. And certainly I want all of our children and, and visitors to be uh, in a, a safe environment as possible. Any other questions? 
So, so what are we doing on that issue? Okay, so it'll go to policy and you'll come back with something. Thank you. Okay. So at your next policy committee meeting and then you'll report out? And sure. I'll, and yeah, I'll we'll address meeting. it. I'll have a note right now about it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hastings. Uh, Ms. Lezinski? Uh, you'll see on your agenda um, <coughs> there's some uh, second readings and some new readings. Uh, there's a stress estimate alert, mandated policies, uh, changes. May, they're all, um, I don't know if there's, there was one that had to be reviewed by personnel, um, I mean HR, I don't know if that's, was that reviewed and put on here? There were some uh, choices to be made, but the other ones are just um, uh, phrases and words and re rewording of the mandated policies. Now there were three uh, regulations, I believe, related to policy that required uh, recommendations on fitness for duty and some of those other health-related issues that uh, the personnel HR department is uh, reviewing for us. I did want to bring to your attention, uh, first reading, there's a new parent organization uh, policy that we're, we're having a first reading on. So if you take a look at that, there's been some additions to it and we decided to adopt them. Uh, also, media relations, although we did update our own policy, there was a stress estimate alert on that and uh, Adam took a look at it and I guess there was some melding look here and there, but ours was mainly uh, right on target. So there's just minor changes to it. So there's a first reading on that again. Just so the board is aware, um, the policy change recommended by Strauss Esme to policy 9400, which is media relations, is born out of a case that I'm actively litigating in Monmouth County Superior Court. And it's because of that case that that policy has changed. Um, I went ahead and spoke with Ms. Lazinski a month or two ago. Um, in view of what was going on in that litigation, I kind of gave the heads up that we should probably rework our policy here, which we did do here. Uh, but since then, Strauss in policy alert 218 uh, released a revised version of policy 9400, which again is really, we were already protected, but if you want to go ahead and adopt this revision by Strauss, I'm, uh, no problem at all. Did you, did, did you see this revision? Uh, I'm familiar with the revision. Yeah. So we can adopt it, it's almost identical. It's almost identical uh, to, to what we've had before. One additional thing, the um, student represented to the board, the bylaw, uh, the, the um, suggestion from the committee is to have an alternate chosen from the student council, which would mean if the representative that's chosen isn't available, they pick an alternate to come to sit with us, which, you know, give another student an opportunity to see what's going on on the board. So that's on for first reading. Thank you, Ms. Lazinski. And now Mr. Ruiz for uh, our Director of Curriculum and Instruction. If you would report out on curriculum, please. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, um, the Curriculum um, and Instruction Committee met on uh, this Friday, the 20th. I'm just gonna go over some highlights from, the, uh, from our meeting. Um, we're in items number 11 to uh, 29. Um, the item number 11, the YMCA Youth Development Program is providing college readiness training for our Dream Academy students. So um, that's to help some of our students with, you know, with any uh, challenges, excuse me, that, put right down. Okay, any challenges that they have with studying, gives them a lot of um, great tools for studying and, and, and being able to manage a college course load. It also helps to fill a gap, I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Debbie, helps to fill a gap because of the way the schedule is between the high school and um, Brookdale when they go to classes. So whenever they're off there, when they come to us, this helps to fill that gap for them. Um, item number 14, um, we have a collaboration with Dan St. Jay to support our performing arts initiatives, which we are implementing at the middle school. Okay. Uh, item number 16, the uh, implementing of the LEADS, the Law Enforcement Against Drugs program in the fifth grade. Uh, this is formerly known as DARE. I think we used to do this in the fifth grade, so now they've changed the name. Um, but it's pretty, pretty similar. It's, it's about, you know, drug prevention. Uh, number 17, um, just a correction on item number 18 from the August agenda. Um, we had built the, um, we, we put the activities and actually the team leader at $1,500 when it actually should have read $2,500. But the, uh, the, um, the district's um, commitment is still $1,500 from, from that board agenda. So that hasn't changed. It's just the amount that we reported was wrong. So we wanted to make that correction in the board minutes. Um, 
Number 19, Waggle, is a new program that we're bringing in. It's a data-rich advanced intervention program. It's kind of, I coined that phrase a little bit, <laughs> um, that will round out our offerings and push our students beyond grade level. Right now, our intervention programs are set up to bring our kids up to grade level. Um, and this program would allow us not only to do intervention for students below, but also to push them ahead. It has a component that allows us to, uh, uh, let's say, a sixth grader to do seventh grade, eighth grade work, something we haven't been able to offer our kids before because we weren't in a place where we could do that. We're in a place now where we can offer our students some more advanced work, which is what our students need so that we can start to show those performance games that we, we anticipate having. Um, item number 20 um, is called the ILA Conference. Um, that is um, the International Literacy Association Conference that's going to take place um, on October um, very shortly. And um, we're um, it's a great professional development opportunity, but even more importantly, we have two teachers who were invited to attend and, all, and with all expenses paid for them to attend this uh, conference. So they'll be attending and presenting, actually. So we're very excited about highlighting those two teachers at the high school. Um, and um, so this is gonna be a very exciting uh, opportunity for them um, coming up in October. Um, number 25 and 26, um, one is the Optical Academy, which provides free exams uh, for eyeglasses um, at Thurgood and Attendance Smiles for Kids, which, um, I, as you know, is kind of like the, uh, we used to have the dental bus come around, so it's the same thing. So it just gives, you know, gives our students and our families free opportunity for dental care and eye care. Okay, if you have any questions about any items on the agenda, please uh, let me know. Yes. The um, Waggle program, is that for literacy? Is that what it is? Literacy and mathematics. And math? Yes. Okay. And um, I have a question about uh, number 16, yep. the pilot for the relationship curriculum. Whose curriculum is that? There's no... Uh, that is a curriculum that we put together. Um, we did it last year. We actually started the pilot of it last year with second grade at Barack Obama. And the curriculum basically it talks about being friends and forming relationships with our students. We wanted to continue the, um, the curriculum for those same students going into third grade and then bringing the new second grade cohort into that relationship um, 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 cu curriculum that we started. Uh, the other it's question. The second year that we're doing it, both. Yes. The other question I had is, what does LEA mean? The conference. No, yeah, we wrote that wrong. It should be ILA, ILA, the International Literacy Association. And I noticed um, there was an account number in there. I was a little confused about. Um, mm -hmm. Five eight five is board travel account. It's not the administrative account. Is that a mistake? One of the line items. Yeah. Not sure. I'm, I don't know how to answer that one. I'm sorry, Jeffrey. Five eighty. So that's I'm not sure that I saw that was different. I just thought it might be a typo. That's okay. that's what his question was. Uh, that account number is on there in error. Okay. Thank you. Um, in addition, that should read I L A. I L A. I L, -E L E A. So number twenty. I if you would be so kind as to make the, the correct I L A. Okay. It stands for International Literacy Association. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Oh, Madam President, I did have one question. I was uh, noticing uh, through the agenda today with the curriculum. Now. It may be that I just forgot, and I, I may, you know, you correct me if I'm, I forgot. I know we had some, uh, quite a few curriculums written, but did we approve all of them? Like, have they been on the agenda since the curriculums were written? I, I know I'm trying to, if somebody could go back and just check, because I'm not recalling some of it, and I, it's just me, my, me, but it could be that we just overlooked uh, having the board um, approve them. I think we are up to date with that because Les uh, Richards checked when he was in, oh, I'm going to say in uh, the first day of school. The first day of school in September. <laughs> we seem to be up to date, but we, we'll double check it. I, I'm pretty sure we're up to date with it. but Because I know we had a lot because we have this, the new freshman class, so we have yes. like an additional class that's now coming in, so we have an additional upper class curriculum, so I was just, mm -hmm. it was just going we, through my mind. We can check that. Any other questions? Thank you. 
public participation in accordance with board policy 0167. So if you have a comment or a question, concern, please come to the podium. You have three minutes. Uh, state your name first and last and your address, please. And thank you. just happy to have my voice back so I haven't had it for about six months uh, Ernest Mignoli 400 Deal Lake Drive Asbury Park New Jersey uh, I've lived here since August bought a home here August of 2007 uh, I've had probably combined about a 50 or 60 year career in education of a uh, recently retired graduate education uh, uh, professor uh, I've taught um, school superintendents, principals from all over the state and in New York, uh, special ed teachers, uh, gifted and talented, um, administration, uh, and probably importantly today, um, um, statistical analysis, uh, analysis, like school report cards and state budgets and things like that. So wh which one are we talking about now? It's kind of a long introduction, but what? We're talking about an item. This isn't the public participation. I thought that starts at 7 o'clock. Thank you. When we have a 6 o'clock meeting, there's time for you to speak at that time, and then it's 7. So you get to speak twice? Yes. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. I, I, miss, I, miss, uh, I miss this kind of work. So. Uh, so so then we're on the agenda at what item? I got a, I got a minute and... Uh, 40 seconds. Right. This is your time to state your concern or if you have a question. Oh, it doesn't have to be about anything in particular? No. It could be about anything. Are you serious? Okay. I'm concerned about... <clears throat> sure. Uh, I'm, certainly, uh, I'm in favor of the... I know you're not going to like this, but the school closings. Uh, I, uh, certainly, I'm in favor of the downsizing of the school district. I think uh, the future is that we're going to run out of students. Uh, I think we have way too many buildings. I think we have way too much staff. I think we have way too little performance. I think there's a lot of waste and budget analysis that could be done. Uh, I think that um, the way the school is uh, equipped and set up, I think it's what we call old school. I think there are more efficient methods and uh, new technology and uh, better shared services between communities and, and et cetera. Uh, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I read somewhere that we're in Asbury now up around $42,000 a student. I think that's a state high. Uh, I know that due to refunding, uh, the, the city has lost a lot of its uh, funding and uh, uh, it, it's tragic. However, let's not forget that the person running the system in uh, Trenton is actually a former superintendent. So perhaps um, perhaps the uh, school chancellor, is that what we say in New Jersey? No. What, Dr. Ripple is what? Commissioner. Commissioner, okay. Oh. Done. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Too much of an introduction. Madam President? Kim. Yeah. I might want to mention that uh, Mr. McNally was not here for uh, the Finance Committee's report about the mistake in the cost per pupil that the state made. He may want to hear the uh, funding, actual funding number. Mr. Lanaraka, you're the chairperson of finance. Would you be kind enough Certainly. to just go over I'll, that I'll portion? I'll just go back over uh, my initial report for anyone 
uh, who wasn't here, district administration has worked uh, the state monitor, the county superintendent, and the Department of Education regarding the data that was collected for the 2018 overall cost per pupil. And initially they reported a cost of over $42,000. Uh, the district has since discovered a data error in that and the student count making that number artificially higher than accurate. And with uh, that error corrected, the number is uh, $36,957 per student. Then I also noted that what the state does in setting that amount, they include all funds received by the district, including funds that the district will go out and solicit for grants. So grant funding, which Asbury Park does an excellent job of obtaining so that summer programs, after school programs, uh, additional child support programs can be offered uh, are included in that number. And when that number is communicated, it's really not communicated in terms of what a particular uh, municipality is paying per student. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lauderaca. Okay. Good. All right, so now public participation for this segment is now closed. Okay. Review of a regular meeting agenda items. Madam Superintendent. Good evening, board and public. Good evening. Are there any questions with regard to items on B1? B2? B3? B4? B5? B6? B7? I had uh, one question, but it's been answered about uh, number six. I uh, spoke uh, to uh, Adam prior to the meeting, so that's the only question I had because I didn't know what it was about. Any other questions regarding anything on B7? B8? Could I, could I go back to B6? for just a second. Is you that uh, B6 uh, item Q, are, are those just additional duties or is there, a, there was a job description for, the, for those positions or are they just individuals who are in their other positions and identified as recruiters? There was a uh, description, a posting for it, and th the, while these are already district employees that operate in another capacity, they had to follow our HR procedure, apply to the posting, and then subsequently uh, this will become an additional assignment for them. So, so the posting includes, in effect, duties that are required? These are additional yeah. responsibilities above what they are operating in their official capacity as. We've, uh, for the past three years, offered these uh, extra positions right. in response to when you talked about our demographic study, just making sure that we have an opportunity to do our part in spreading information about the great innovative programs the board has supported the school district in implementing. Right, no, I, I think it's, it, it's great to be doing that and I just wanted to confirm that we have some detail to the tasks they would be doing in light of the fact they're doing these other jobs as yes. well. But you're saying we have that. So okay. uh, if I may, for an example, on some of the Saturdays, there are, as you know, this is a wonderfully energetic and vibrant city. And on some of the Saturdays, they have a lot of events. Uh, sometimes we have Oyster Fest. Sometimes we have other <coughs> Chamber of Commerce events. Tabling opportunities exist, and we always like to make sure we have a presence. Uh, oftentimes, our bilingual district parent involvement specialist, Ms. Sonia Irizarry, who's here tonight, will volunteer her time. But in addition, we have um, other staff members that do come out because they can be very long days. 
to spread the great word of what we're doing at Asbury Park Schools. Any items on B9? I just uh, had a question about 9 and 10. They weren't uh, attached to the agenda, but because of the uh, timelines that are involved here, you know, I'm not going to... I'd like to see the items attached when we have to approve um, different submissions to the NJDOE, if we could please. Okay, items, any items on B10? B11. I just had a question. What does MC3 stand for? It's the Monmouth County uh, Consortium for uh, di directors and supervisors of curriculum and instruction. Okay, thank you. It's facilitated primarily by our executive county superintendent, Dr. Lester Richards and members from the uh, Executive County Superintendent's Office. Thank you. Any items on B, any additional items on B11? And as it relates to uh, the question about the SSDS, our director, um, Debbie Sylvia will be doing a presentation on that so you'll have the information okay that will be a part of the 7 p.m. presentation no other question thank you madam superintendent be happy to take any questions on items uh, c1 uh, number one through c6 number 14 and I'd like to point out on page c2 Various donations from the Monmouth County Young Democrats, the Esbury Park Toy Drive, Canned Aid, and uh, Ms. Patricia Lezinski on behalf of Cone Resnick. Uh, and I would also point out on C3, number six, that reflects the use of facilities that we discussed uh, earlier in the uh, Buildings and Grounds Committee report. Any questions? Uh, Madam President? Yes. So we're gonna amend that, number six? Because you said, uh, with the exception of custodial fees? The recommendation from the Buildings and Grounds Committee was that uh, we waive the room fee and ask for the custodial fee. Uh, it's up to the board to decide how they'd yes. like to address that. We'll have to do that during the uh, regular public meeting, though, correct? Right. Okay. Can we separate that when we go get to your agenda, Mr. Hastings? Uh, Madam President, can we separate that? So yes, that we, we can. May. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Okay, thank you. I would, uh, if I may? Yes, Madam Secretary. I just would like to make a correction on C2D. That item will be coming, uh, will need to be removed. It's being removed? Yes. Okay. However, I would like to make a comment about it. All right. Very delighted that we have Dr. Sandra Manuskin here, Vice Principal of Bradley Elementary School. She's had some conversations and she had a um, member from the community reach out to her, an organization, a nonprofit organization from the community, reach out to her uh, with regard to interest in our students in the Asbury Park School District. And so through that conversation and through articulation between myself Dr. Manuskin uh, connecting me with this canned aid organization. We learned that there is this large conference, if you will, of bicycles that happen in the city of Asbury Park. Because there's a connection of one of the nonprofit organizers, they reached out and they said, we'd love to provide families in the, in the school district with bikes. And so we're delighted that Canned Aid will be donating directly to our families, and therefore, this is why item C2, uh, resolution item D is coming off. It's not a donation to the school district, 
but it is a donation to our families for which we are so delighted that um, they want to have that presence in the city. So I need a motion to adjourn. Motion. Okay. We'll uh, reconvene for the seven o'clock meeting in about six minutes. Oh, hi. <laughs> Good evening. In accordance with the provision of the Open Public Meeting Act, NJSA 1046 PL 1975 C231S1 amended 2006 C70S2, the Asbury Park Board of Education has provided adequate notice of this meeting by sending a notice of the time, date, location, and to the extent known the agenda of this meeting to Asbury Park Press and the New Coast Store on January 4th, 2019 by email. Copies of this notice have also been placed at the Administration Building Bulletin Board, District Schools, Asbury Park Municipal Building, Asbury Park Police Department and filed with the City Clerk on January 4th, 2019. Our mission statement, the Asbury Park School District will provide all students with a comprehensive and progressive education where everyone possesses the skills and character to succeed in a diverse, evolving global society. Mr. Hastings, roll call please. Ms. Breach? Here. Mr. Grillo? Here. Ms. Jones? Mr. Ladaraka? Here. Ms. Lazinski? Here. Mr. Pinckney? Here. Mr. Saunders, Ms. Etienne, Ms. Abbas Anderson. Here. I would like to take the time to introduce you to our new student member. Her name is Sanai Coven. Yeah. And would you like to tell them a little bit about me? My name is Sanai Colvin. I'm a freshman at Adley Park High School. I'm currently in the Dream Academy program, so that means I'll be graduating with an associate's degree by my uh, senior year. Um, I, I'm actually pretty nervous, but I'm actually pretty happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty happy to be here. I plan on studying political science and criminal justice. So this is our student. You will see her on a monthly basis. We're very pleased to have her, and so welcome to you. Thank you. Flag salute, please stand. Madam Superintendent, you have presentations. Good afternoon, yes. Uh, good afternoon, board, members of the public. Tonight, we will have two presentations that will be conducted by our Director of School Counseling, Debbie Sylvia. The first one is with regard to our grades on as it relates to HIB, which stands for Harassment, Intimidation, and Bullying. Good evening. Um, I'm doing these presentations on behalf of um, Dr. Howard, who um, is in charge of the HIV and our SSSD reports. So these are reports that have to be um, submitted twice a year. And I believe the first one was already submitted um, during the school year, and this is the end of the year reports um, that cover July until June 30th. So when we talk about HIB, um, there's a self-assessment that each school district has to do, each school in the district has to do to assess how they're doing with uh, following the regulations. And these are the scores for each of the individual schools across eight core elements. 
Um, and the ones that are scored the lowest, um, if you look at Bradley, um, it's a little bit lower than the rest of them. And they're mostly in the area of, let's see, actually it's not that lower. Um, and core element one, which is HIV programs, approaches, or other initiatives. So all of the um, HIV specialists at the elementary schools and at the middle school and at the high school are all attending a training to um, you know, help them understand the laws better and the regulations and how to better conduct HIV investigations. So that's a proactive step that um, Dr. Howard took with the department to make sure that we continue to see these scores rise. Our average score um, for the district is a 70. And if you look statistically at our data, we continue to go up. Back in 2015, 16, we were below 60. So we were at 59, around 59%. So we have seen growth in these self-assessments and hopefully with the ongoing training, we'll continue to see that um, go on an upward swing. We had 34 um, reports that were investigated and 17 of those reports were confirmed as HIV. So we're about 50%. We still struggle a little bit with um, you know, students recognizing whether or not they are in an HIV um, claim. So a lot of kids, sometimes if they get into a fight or they get into an argument with their friends, they might say, oh, they're bullying me. It has to be very specific guidelines for it to classify as an HIV. And a lot of times they are just um, you know, disagreements or maybe things that fall under code of conduct, but are not necessarily um, against the protected class. And that's the difference. It has to be against the protected class for it um, to count as an HIV. These are some improvements that Dr. Howard um, is developing for the program to increase parent and community awareness, again, so that parents in the community understand the difference between an HIV and the difference between a conflict, and monthly meetings to develop and maintain positive school climate. We do have um, a school climate committee in the buildings, and we also have, um, specifically to HIV, a committee that meets twice a year in each of the buildings to talk about the trends that they see and where they can improve the school climate. These are our anti-bullying specialists. Um, we have you know, one for each building. <clears throat> and that's the conclusion of the HIV presentation. I do. Um, is there an average statewide score? Or like what, what do other schools in, in the state have in terms of their? I'm not sure of the data, and I don't want to give an incorrect um, estimate, so I can get the information for you and get it back to you, again, because this, this is really Dr. Howard's report. So I don't have that information handy, but I'm sure there is probably an average, and we can get it for you. Yeah, I'd like to see that, just okay. to see where we rank with, with other schools. Right. Any other questions? Okay, we're gonna to transition to the SSD report. This is the student safety data system that we use that tracks all of our conduct. And this is the report for the 18-19 um, period two, the second half of the year. So you can see the totals um, for each of our schools. We had 33 incidents and 78 that qualified as other incidents. An incident is an incident of violence, vandalism, weapons offenses, or substance offenses. And the other are any incidents that lead to student removal from the regular school setting. And that could include OSS or ISS, so perhaps a fight. And then if you look at the 17-18 um, for the same period, it's kind of hard to see them not side by side. So if you look, those numbers might seem a little bit high. But then if you compare them to where we were in 17-18, you'll see for the high school that we are on a downward trend on those incidents. So although you look, if you just look at that number um, in isolation, it may seem high, but in, in relative to what we've been seeing, it's actually been going down. So we're, especially in the other category where we have the OSS and the ISS incidents, we're down 34 um, other incidents just at the high school alone. And if you look at the middle school, that's the, um, the largest decrease. You see in the other category, we're down 80 incidents. So that's, we want to continue to see that. That's remarkable from 95 to 15 incidents mm -hmm. in the course of one year. And then in the regular incidents, um, we're down nine. Same thing for Bradley. In the other incidents, you can see that large drop from um, 42 to 35. We're down 35 to seven. 
Barack Obama, you can see that all of our schools are seeing declines across the board. This is the incident report from 16, 17, 17, 18, and 18, 19, so a three-year comparison. And as you can see, we do continue to go down. So the conclusion that we can draw from this are the programs that we're bringing into the district to support students in the classrooms are working. So all of the social emotional things, the yoga calm, the restorative circles, um, all of those things that we're doing, the deep breathing exercises, the mindfulness, all of those things are having an impact on our students and we're seeing that reflected in the discipline. So that concludes that report. Any questions on that one? I have one. So I know we've had a change. One. I know we have a change. Uh, some, some people have left within the district. Are those programs gonna, they're still continuing for this year, so we'll continue to see another drop? Yeah, we're still, we still have all of those right. programs in the district. So you think there's anything else besides those programs that have led to this uh, decrease? Or do you think that's the main? I think some of it initially was our reporting as well, mm -hmm. because maybe we were not classifying things in the right category. So we might have seen a drop in the numbers from some of that as well. Thank you. So thank you so much, Ms. Uh, Sylvia, for presenting information that's not directly related to your office, but um, you still kind of touch in that area as a school counselor. If I may, I just want to just touch on Ms. Breach. Your, your question is a very um, timely one, and I appreciate that question because I want to I want to go on record as saying, as Ms. Sylvia stated, there's a lot of reasons for the decline, but I want to be very clear that that we are experiencing a decline in all of our schools. Um, we have wonderfully innovative practices and programs in place that support teaching and educating and supporting the whole child. So we have wonderful social and emotional programs. But when we put systems in place to monitor and make sure that we are accounting for our uh, data and the inputting system, that has a lot to do with it as well. So this is not the result of just one specific thing. And so I don't want anyone to feel like, well, you know, there's changes in terms of who may be present. Present, it's a myriad of factors. The culture at the high school is one where our students and our families are thriving. They enjoy being there. And our teachers' instructional practice has a lot to do with the decrease in discipline because what we continue to message out to the staff and the school community at large is that instruction and discipline are not two separate ideas. We are educating the whole child and so discipline and instruction work hand in hand. So it's all of those things in its totality that have led to that decrease. And although Dr. Howard is not here, I give her and her team kudos, but uh, I also give kudos to the ex entire executive committee and all teachers and administrators and everyone in between. It is definitely a collective effort of our entire student population. Which brings me, uh, if I may, Madam President, to the next item on the agenda. And so when we think about a decrease in school discipline, oftentimes we may not necessarily connect that to the role of a secretary. We might think of it as more so security, <laughs> Very rarely does anyone connect it to custodial engineers. But I'm delighted tonight that um, one of the presentations that I'll be giving is the Golden Bucket Award. Golden Bucket Award was started um, by the previous superintendent as a way to acknowledge the hard work and dedication of our custodial engineers. When students come into a space and a place that's clean, where there, there has been a lot of thought put into how students are entering a building, how parents walk and approach a building, how the community sees a building. It says a lot about not just the outside and the aesthetics, it says a lot about what's going on inside. If the school looks dirty and unkempt for on the outside, one's inclination is that there may not be anything worthwhile happening inside. And so I'm delighted that uh, under Mr. Sosa's leadership, 
we have a group of custodial engineers that we're going to recognize tonight for their work all last year and ensuring that our facilities were safe, were orderly, and were well maintained. And we don't take that lightly in the Asbury Park School District because it sends a very clear message that we are about business and that we are about the business of ensuring that our children, our families, and our communities have the very best. So without further ado, I'm going to ask all of the board members if they would join me as we recognize our custodial, custodial engineers, Mr. Sosa, if you would come, so we can make the acknowledgement for the winning team from school year 18-19 for the Golden Bucket Award. In, in the absence of our buildings and grounds chair, I'm going to ask Madam President if you would uh, stand side by side with Mr. Sosa and I. We leveled up. You know, we have a system in place, but we are next level Asbury Park School District. And so in so doing, next level, in my mind, equal an actual golden bucket. <laughs> so we have an actual golden bucket that's going to hang in the winning school. Mr. Sosa, can you just give a little background? Um, the, quite honestly, the, uh, the group that's here has come a long way. Um, they are fantastic. Um, they've done a lot to um, show not only the public, also the teachers and the students that are there, that when they come into the building, um, there's pride being given, um, not just in the little things that you see in a lot of the things that you don't see. Um, we see it, we recognize it, we appreciate it, we thank you. Um, and in that spirit, um, Thurgood Marshall is the winner of last year's Golden Bucket. Um, we have some members here. Woo -hoo! Let's give them a round of applause. Go Thurgood Marshall. Our head custodial engineer, Mr. Tron Goldfarb, could not be with us tonight, but I'm so delighted that the members from the team at Thurgood Marshall are here. Also, I want to thank our district bilingual parent involvement specialist for reaching out. We have wonderful city partners and um, through the Chamber of Commerce, through different businesses and organizations, and they were so excited and delighted and wanted to, sh wanted to share in our joy in terms of celebrating you and provided us with some donated gift cards. So we want to thank you so much, and I'm going to call you up one by one. As I mentioned, Tron Goldfarb is not here. We have Mike Eskridge. Leon Hughes. He walked in right on cue. Leon Hughes, come on down. All right. Everyone gets to take a picture with the bucket, but if Miss Jackson Byers doesn't get her bucket tomorrow, you know it's gonna be a problem. So nobody gets to sleep home with it. Well, we can designate one person to take it home and sleep with. You guys can pass it around. Thank you, Mr. Hughes, for your commitment and dedication to our students. Anthony Rosario. Carl Ferguson.
Especially in an elementary school, we know it's not easy to keep an elementary school clean. Thank you so much. It's not easy to keep the little ones, you know, keep the rooms tidy. Good job. Yep. I just wanted to, um, Mr. Rosario Anthony reminded me that um, just so everybody's counting, um, this is third time for the same school. Good job, guys. Good job. Great job. Third time for the same school, but not necessarily the same team. So um, I only say that to say that, I only say that to say that, you know, it's evident that all of our custodial engineers take so much pride every day in the work that they do, and we really appreciate you. Moving on to the next presentation. It gives me great pleasure to have this moment. Oh, board members, I'm sorry. I should have told you, just keep standing. Instead of like in church, get up there. <laughs> it gives me great pleasure to take this time to acknowledge our retirees. We were not able to recognize them in June of last year. And I'm so thankful that some of them have been, were able to come out tonight to be recipients of this acknowledgement. We had 13 individuals that retired last night, I mean last year at different times, but I'm going to I'm going to read all of the names for everyone and then the individuals that are here will please come forward. Okay? Uh Akia Muhammad, she's not able to be with us tonight. Fabrice Cuadrado, Jeanette Moen, John Kostecki, oh, I'm sorry, I, sh I meant to read the uh, numbers of years of service. 28 years of service for John Kostecki, Jeanette Moen, 15 years of service, for Brice Cuadrado, 18 years of service, Aquia Muhammad, 23 years of service, Michael McLeod, 39 years of service, I believe, is Michael here? No. Lewis Griffin, 26 years of service. Come on down, Lou Griffin. More affectionately known as Lou Griffin. Come on down, we have something for you. You can just stand up longer and be in the photo longer. Veronica Patterson, 27 years of service. Our guy who's holding it, holding it down for us at the central office and district-wide, Mr. Benjamin Evans, <laughs> Pastor Reverend, 21 years of service. Come on down. Let the people look at you for a while. Don't let Luke Griffin stop you. Jacqueline Tillman, 35 years of service. I know she's not going to have a problem coming down now. Miss Deidre Towns Johnson, 37 years of service, and my former administrative executive assistant. That's right, give the royal wave. Kathleen Clossy, 17 years of service. Greg Roper, 12 years of service. And Alex Yangu, 15 years of service. I'll say that the most senior individual standing here tonight is Ms. D, D affection Ms. Uh, Deidre Towns Johnson, more affectionately known as Ms. D, at 37 years of service. We appreciate all that you've done on behalf of our students, their parents, our families, and our community, and the staff at large. We really appreciate your dedication and commitment. Your story is such a wonderful story of how you've just transitioned and progressed throughout the district. And coming out tonight means a lot to me personally. It's great to see you. And to all of our recipients, Mr. Evans, you know, first time I started here, we connected as well. You and Ms. D, 
<laughs> kind of brought me through. So thank you so much to all of our retirees tonight. And on behalf of the Board of Education, I'm sure uh, Ms. Abes Anderson would like to have a word or two. Well, we're just very appreciative of your years of service, and we just wanted to thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna have a photo up. Yeah, we're all gonna squeeze in. And at different levels, everyone here has impacted all of the executive committee, so I wanna ask the team if you come join in the picture with us. Especially you, Ms. Buford. <laughs> Pass it to you. Moving forward with our agenda, I have the uh, superintendent's report. Madam Superintendent. Thank you. Uh, my report is very brief. I want to just acknowledge that we have completed, first of all, we had a fantastic opening to our school year for which I was very delighted and pleased uh, to see many of our parents and children just smiling and excited about the opening of the school year. As I mentioned, our buildings were all in pristine condition, just lovely, ready to receive children. Our staff seemed to be very energized and invigorated. I want to thank the board for always supporting what may sometimes seem like an out there idea, but knowing that I have your support means a lot in terms of the impact that it has on our school readiness. Uh, yesterday was the completion of three back to school nights that were very well attended at all levels. We typically see a drop off at the high school because, and that's not just an Asbury Park thing, that's national. And it has a lot to do with the fact that because students are older, parents feel like they don't necessarily need to be as involved. But the culture and the programs at the high school are very interesting, very exciting, and our parents are very interested in seeing, learning, and, and being more involved. I want to thank one of the members from my executive team, Ms. Ivy Brown, who was actually present that night for the high school back to school night and observed and witnessed an increase not only at the high school back to school night, but also at the middle school and all three elementary schools. An increase in our parent participation. I'd like to thank our district bilingual parent involvement specialist, uh, Sonia Erisari, as well as John Burnick, who were very thoughtful in presenting uh, Title I information and making sure that our parents understand all of the protocols and the expectations for the students. Debbie Sylvia's office as school counselor also is doing a phenomenal job in her outreach efforts and to date she has visited one charter school and we have four more visitations for our charter and non-public schools where our district is a part of a presentation. Sometimes we present in isolation where they just invite us in and we share uh, the innovative programs and uh, the 
recruitment efforts that we have underway for our school. So I want to thank Debbie Sylvia and the guidance team for making a presence in one school and they will be visiting in the upcoming week, weeks and I'll be sharing this with the board in a communication, other schools in the area so that students and parents have options just like if they were applying to a private school or a college, we go in school and do open houses. So thank you so much to your team for being very diligent and making sure the message of the great work and the great and innovative programs that we have in the district are being shared. That completes my report. Thank you, Madam Superintendent. And now public participation in accordance with- Madam President, can I just oh, mention something? Me. Yes. Uh, just to uh, piggyback off the uh, superintendent, I just wanted to mention uh, about the girls, the JV volleyball team, who uh, made history on Monday, playing uh, the first ever Asbury Park School District JV vol girls volleyball game home against Manasquan. And um, I just think it was fantastic that uh, we now have uh, a girls volleyball team and it made, made history by doing this. And uh, with the addition of a soccer team at the high school, you know, I just think that's phenomenal. Can I just add something real quick? They won their first two games. So they, they, they swept. And I also want to thank oh, Mr. Sosa, he left. But they did a phenomenal job at the middle school setting everything up. It looked in the new mats, it looked just great. I was just really impressed. And the crowd, the amount of students that came from the high school to watch this team play, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. <laughs> Many thanks for sharing. <laughs> the success of our athletic team, and we thank you for, as board members for your leadership and oversight in ensuring that we had a robust uh, fall sports program and that it was an equitable experience for our children. So thank you. Thank you. And now it's time for public participation in accordance oh, with board policy. Madam, Madam President. I, I, that I know, I okay, know. Get with the program. I, there's something that, that that's that's you know I I wanted to ask this, um, Madam Superintendent about because um, I received something in the mail and it seemed like it was contrary to what we've been saying and I just wanted clarification because I felt like I know it's the silly season and campaigns are starting and everything but um, I got a, something in the mail that seemed to me like it was outright bogus, uh, saying that the schools have no evening, uh, no, n no evening programs and no academic summer programs. And apparently from what I hear, this went out to everybody. So I just wanted to, to ask, is this true or is this, what, what is the truth on this? Because I think it's important that, that residents and uh, families know what's what. As I share it in the very beginning, um, I really appreciate and am delighted to have a wonderfully supportive board. A lot of the decrease in the discipline rate that uh, we just saw a pre or just had a presentation on, I mentioned is directly tied to those innovative programs that you continue to support as a board. And those innovative programs include an after school program, for our students that are pre-K to eight, where they remain with us until a quarter to 6 p.m. and they are provided with a snack and dinner. Um, that program will begin October 1st. In addition, we continue the tradition of an academic summer program that uh, is 20 days for our students pre-K to eight and slightly longer for our students in high school. And so I appreciate that the board continues to support those innovative programs that we're able to provide for all of our students. We have a rich, robust high school summer program as well, and that affords our students an additional opportunity to make up credits, take any uh, makeup classes, or anything of that nature. nature. So thank you again to the board for continuing to ensure that all of our students have what they need. Some of our students need more, and you are committed to making that happen. Thank you for that clarification. Thank you.
now is <laughs> taking my time with this. Public participation in accordance with board policy 0167. You have three minutes. Please come to the podium. First and last name. State your comment. Nothing to say. Uh, okay, I'm going to close it. Yeah, give me time. Good evening. <clears throat> Ernest Magnoli, 400 Deal Lake Drive, Asbury Park. Uh, it's a little uncomfortable to come meeting after meeting and be one of the few speakers. Uh, I think that um, any school system that uh, seems challenged by data and statistics needs to bring the uh, community in, homeowners, taxpayers, etc. cetera. Uh, although I listen in these meetings, of the congratulatory nature, uh, I find that in looking at state school report cards, performance uh, uh, indicators, et cetera, that we are in fact in Asbury Park with one of the lowest performing districts and school systems in the state. Uh, not counting the fact that we're probably the second most dangerous place in the state. Of, of And I know Everybody says, no, that's not true, but remember, New Jersey uses FBI reporting system, current data, year to year. They, per, they per, pro rata, I mean per capita, look at 565 municipalities. Here we go. Here we go. Thank you, Mr. Attorney, for helping me lose my train of thought, okay? I don't think I would do that to you on a presentation. Uh, I'm sorry, sir, what did I do? You just helped me lose my train of thought. I oh, I, I, if I can help you get back to your train of thought, I certainly yeah, would. No, but I, I apologize if you no, lost your train of thought. Time, so. But anyway, so as I was saying, um, uh, it, it, it really doesn't matter what's said here. What matters is the data. School systems in, in New Jersey go by data and statistics and records, et cetera. It's nice to come and make statements and self-congratulatory things, but the data indicates tremendously opposite for Asbury Park. Uh, public opinion is that no one, there are a lot of communities nearby Asbury that are actually sending districts to Asbury. No one accepts that. They're willing to pay to go to wall school, to go anywhere except here. Uh, with 30 seconds left, I'll mention that over the past few months, I've reported incidents on school grounds. There are uh, liquor and beer and smoking parties at the Bangs Avenue School, two, three, four hundred people. There was the incident I reported at the high school with the police and firemen uh, drinking and playing uh, baseball, and nothing came of that. There was the incident at the transportation center where they had liquor in there, and there's kids, and all these involved kids in school grounds. And uh, finally, because of my reporting, I was the victim of, you may have seen in the paper. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else public, public participation? It is now closed. State monitor's report, please. I have no report. Thank you. Acceptance of minutes? Madam President? Yes. Uh -huh. Could I have a motion for all items A1, number 10, A through E? Move. Moved by Ms. Lazinski, second by Mr. Gerland. Do you have a question? I, I have a correction. I believe on August 21st, the special meeting, was that the training with Ms. Weinkoff? No, the 21st, I believe, was the town hall. Any other questions? Okay. Ms. Lazinski? Yes. Mr. Grillo? Yes. Ms. Breach? Mr. Lauderaco? No. 
Mr. Pinckney? Yes. And Ms. Abbas Anderson? Yes. Motion carries. Madam Superintendent? Could I, before oh. we go to the superintendent's Excuse agenda, yeah. on A2, we have items 11 and 12. Could I have a motion for those two items? Need a motion, please. Motion. Oh. Ms. Breach and Ms. Lazinski. Question. This is A2, 11 and 12. Ms. Breach? Yes. Ms. Lazinski? Yes. Mr. Grillo? Yes. Mr. Ladaraka? Yes. Mr. Pinckney? Yes. Ms. Abbas Anderson? Yes. Motions carry. Madam Superintendent, would you like to ask for a consent agenda? Thank you, I would. Before I do that, I would just like to go on record and say that uh, we have a fantastic security team. I mentioned some of our ancillary staff prior to the awarding of the Golden Bucket Award, but I would like to uh, go on record now and just say I'm very pleased with the leadership of our school security uh, direct un under our director, Lewis Jordan, and our entire security team. Uh, we've seen not only a decrease in incidences uh, around discipline, but we have a wonderful footprint and presence as it relates to ensuring that our students have a safe and orderly school environment. Um, I just want to be clear that our schools are safe and that our enrollment continues to increase, particularly at the high school, which is why we have this push in terms of making sure we're going out and we're visible in other school districts and other schools where parents have found our district to be an, an, a wonderful option for their children. That being said, I would like to ask for the board to uh, accept a consent agenda for items on B1 to B11. Second. Question. Mr. Hastings. All items B1 through B11. Ms. Lazinski? Yes. Mr. Grillo? Uh, yes, on everything except B6Q and C. I'm sorry, B6Q, you're abstaining. Thank you. Ms. Breach? Yes. Except B4L and B76 abstain. Thank you. Mr. LaRocca? Yes. Mr. Pinkney? Yes. Ms. Abbas Anderson? Yes. All motions carry. Mr. Hastings, whenever you're ready, would you like to ask for a consent agenda? Yes, ma'am. Uh, prior to presenting the agenda, I'd like to note that C2 5D has been deleted from our agenda, so we will not be voting on that. And we are separating out C3 number 6. So this is C1 number 1 through C6 number 14 with, uh, without C3 number 6. Can I have a motion for those items, please? Okay. Question. Okay, Ms. Lazinski? Yes. Ms. Breach? No, oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Grillo? Uh, yes, on everything. Uh, staying on C25A. Thank you. Ms. Breach? Yes. Mr. Ladaraka? Yes. Mr. Pinkney? Yes. Ms. Abbas Anderson? Yes. All, motion, all items carry. And could I have a motion for C3, number six? I need a second. Second. Can we make an adjustment to that to uh, uh, just charge for the custodial fees and waive the, uh, was it the fifth, the room fee, correct? Yeah, as uh, recommended by the B&G uh, committee. Board is in agreement. That's the motion we can correct. I'll make a. I'll make an amendment to my. I moved it, right? Yes. I'll amend my uh, the resolution to uh, reflect that change. Thank you. And the second, Mr. Grove. Uh, 
Thank you. Okay, Mr. Lauderacker. Any questions? Okay. So the motion is C3 number six. We're waiving the room fee only. Ms. Lazinski? Yes. Mr. Lauderacker? Yes. Ms. Breach? Yes. Mr. Grillo? Uh, yes. Mr. Pinkney? Yes. Sabas Anderson? Yes. Motion carries. That completes my agenda. Thank you, Mr. Pinkney. Need a motion to adjourn? Second. Okay. You have some other Irish. Irish. <laughs> Do you have something to say, Mr. Reach? I'm taking it back. Me too. Okay, Ms. Reach does have something to say. Please turn your mic off, Ms. Reach. Okay. We're waiting. Come no, on. I'm good. I just, I just, the question was no executive session. That was it. I guess we don't need anything. Oh, no. Okay. So the motion is to close. Mr. Grillo, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you all. All right.